it was time to start working on the fertilizer buggy steering. And the first thing I wanted to do was make a new end for the original hydraulic cylinder. I made a bunch of stops around town trying to find a swivel head that would screw onto the cylinder, but I didn't have any luck. And most people I talked to said that that was gonna be really hard to find if, if possible at all. So I ended up having to make my own. This is a ball on a tractor three point. And then I also picked up a coupling nut that would screw onto the end of the rod. I put a little notch in it, which I thought would help the swivel sit down into it and keep it centered. I was worried about slag getting down on the threads of the nut when I welded it. And so I grabbed the bolt that sit inside of it and kind of filled the space up, which would hopefully keep the threads clean. And then once I was happy with the position, I clamped it all down. It's kind of a balancing act, but it wasn't too bad. Give it some good tacks on both sides and then welded it solid. Had to be careful not to weld the bolt, so I scooted it back just a little bit. I made a couple of passes on it. There's going to be a lot of pressure on this and hoping to get it pretty strong. It screwed on there nice, but I wasn't quite sure how I was going to tighten it down. I definitely didn't want to put a pipe wrench on the rod because that would booger it up pretty easily and then it would just leak oil forever. What I ended up doing was just having to take it apart and I knew there'd be a nut on the end of the rod. And then I could stick this nut in the vise, which would keep the rod from spinning. I put some thread locker on it. I'd be really surprised if the swivel had loosened up, but I guess it's a possibility over time. And then I spun it back on there and with the nut locked down in the vise, I could tighten it down without it spinning. And then I just had to put it back together and it was good to go. I also decided to drill and tap a grease fitting, hoping to prolong the life of it a little bit. <laughs> okay, now I'm really ripping off Frank Howarth, but I had to give it a shot. It seemed like too good of an opportunity to not try out a little bit of stop motion. I think I'm a little bit of an engineer at heart, and I thought it was a fun problem figuring out where the cylinder needs to go to give the precise turning radius I designed. And so I thought I'd take a second to, to kind of explain my thought process. I measured the distance between the center of the holes with the cylinder fully extended and the cylinder fully retracted. And then I brought those measurements into SketchUp. I drew a flat plane to work on that was perpendicular to the wheel that turns with it. And then I turned the wheel all the way to the right up tight against the frame, which ended up being 47 degrees. Gave it just a tiny bit of clearance. I kind of arbitrarily picked a starting point to test out. And from that point, I could draw a circle with the radius of the cylinder all the way extended. So this circle represents where the outside of the cylinder would center on if the front of it was attached at that point. Next, I could leave this circle where it was and rotate just the wheel to the other extreme, all the way left, 47 degrees, and draw a new circle from the same point representing the cylinder all the way retracted. And where the two circles intersect are places where the cylinder could be mounted and it would give me that turn radius. Mounting the cylinder in this position obviously wouldn't work because one intersection is outside the frame and the other one is up on the left side, which wouldn't give the cylinder enough clearance underneath the frame. I kept trying new mounting points by moving the front point left and right, and I eventually came up with 
these circles that I thought would work really well. It's just right on the inside of the right frame. Now that I knew the distance from the frame to the intersection point, I could make some brackets to hold the cylinder. Daniel stopped by to give me a hand, tightening this big bolt down. I was clamping the top and the bottom of the bracket to a piece of metal that was the right distance for the bracket to be spaced. And then I stuck a bolt through it and tightened it down so it wouldn't move. Well, I got it welded up. And I could pull that piece of metal out. I really wanted to build a couple brackets that I could clamp in place and check the turn radius and the tolerances on either side before committing to welding it onto the frame. Because I knew it wasn't going to be perfect the first time. Even though I knew where it needed to go on my plans, I knew there are a lot of other little variables that are going to make it different. I felt like SketchUp was giving me a starting point, but it was definitely going to take some dialing in to get the what? exact right position. Yeah, got it. Just got to build the back bracket. I got the front one done. I got the back bracket built as well. It's kind of a tight fit getting the bolt in there. I think it bowed outward a little bit when I welded it, but it still worked pretty good. I brought it over and hooked up to the front bracket. I was really happy with the fit on the brackets. There was very little play in both of them and I was already excited about this improvement over the old front end. I was having trouble figuring out how to pick the front end of the buggy up with the hoist without the chains being in the way of the fork. Everywhere I grabbed it, it seems to be in the way. And so I thought I'd take a second to make the tie down on the front of the buggy. I needed to do this anyways and I thought if I got this done then I can hook the chain around it and lift it up in a spot allowing me to rotate the wheel to both sides without it hitting. After drawing the shape on a card sock, I transferred it onto some flat bar and cut it out and then welded it on. We use these tie downs to chain the buggy down to our flatbed trailer so we can haul it around to different locations on our farm. It was going to be so much easier if I could spin the fork all the way to both sides without it hitting the chain. I grabbed the chain and looped it through and lifted it up. But after all that work, <laughs> it still hit the dang chain. So I was just going to have to loop around one side of the frame to check one side and then lower it down and rechain it on the other side to check that side. Oh well, it wasn't too much more work. With the wheel turned all the way to the right, I extended the cylinder as far as it would go and then clamped it onto the frame where that matched up. And then I rotated it around and just as I expected, it wasn't quite right. It wasn't too bad though. I had about an inch of space between the fork and the frame and I knew I could get it closer than that. I scooted the front mounting point over about a quarter of an inch and then repeated the process and checked it. A little more turn to the right than this to the left. Yeah. And that side has like an eighth of an inch. Mm -hmm. So I might keep tweaking it a little bit. I think I can just move this out a little bit and that changes it quite a bit. When I was moving the brackets, I found myself drawing an analogy to a clock in my head. When I moved the front bracket left or right, it determined how many degrees the wheel would turn or how many hours it covered on the clock. So let's say I settled on 90 degrees or three hours of turn, <laughs> if that makes sense. Then moving this back bracket determines where these three hours will fall on the clock. After a lot of tweaking and trying different positions, I felt like I finally found a spot that I was happy with. So I went ahead and put some heavy tacks on the brackets. And then before I welded it solid, I wanted to check it again. Sounds like a break. <laughs> Not just about perfect. I had about a quarter of an inch on either side and it was nice and even and it made the full use of the turn radius I designed. 
So I went ahead and molded it solid. I was really happy that there's just a little bit of a gap between the fork and the frame. So I didn't have to worry about the fork whacking the frame as I turned at the end of the field. I could just turn as sharp as it would go and I know the cylinder would just max out. It was Friday afternoon and I'd had the goal all week of taking this thing for a test drive before the weekend, even if it was just around the parking lot. And I was just about there, just had to button up a couple things. I attached the hydraulic hoses after throwing in the battery and the hydraulic oil tank. I reattached the radiator hoses and filled it up with some water. Made a mess on the shop floor again. I'm getting pretty good at that. Let's fire it up. I found out very quickly that the radiator shroud was going to need a little trimming. The fan was hitting it just a little bit. And my steering was backwards, of course. 50-50 odds. So that's definitely going to go against me. I swapped the hoses really quickly. Getting really close to the end of the work day, so I had to hurry. Kicked it into high gear. Okay, let's try this again. It was raining outside, so I didn't want to spend too long out there. I hated to get into bare metal wet, but I was really happy with it. it. Turned nice and sharp. I think it turned sharper than before, actually, and it seemed solid and really tight. There's no play in it, no bounce or anything. So I was really excited about that. But I didn't want my joyride to last too long out there in the rain, so. As soon as I felt pretty confident about things, I backed it into the dry shop. All I have left to do is build a fender and get the machine painted, and this thing will be done. Thanks for watching.